Hi, this is Christy with OESD, and welcome to your Stitch Party. In today's Stitch Party, we'll be making this In the Hoop Wallet. This project is a great way to show off your favorite fabrics, and it's a really practical and fun project to make. It's made completely in one hooping, so you'll find it's very easy to put together. Let's look at how it's done. First, let's look at the supplies we'll need. We'll be using two fabrics, a main fabric which will form the outside of the wallet and the lining, and a contrast fabric that we'll use for the pockets and the pocket lining of the zipper pocket. For the main fabric, you'll need a 3 inch by 3 inch piece that will form the tab. You'll need a 5 inch by 13 inch piece which you will fold and press to five by six and a half inches. This will form the wallet bottom. You'll also need a five inch by four inch piece that you will fold and press to five inches by two inches. That will be the wallet top. And you'll need a five by eight inch piece that will be your wallet lining. From your contrast fabric, you're going to cut two five inch by six and a half inch pieces for the longer pockets. You'll fold and press these to five by three and a quarter. You'll also need two five inch by five inch pieces for the shorter pockets that you'll fold and press to five by two and a half inches. And finally you'll need a five inch by four and a half inch piece for the zipper pocket lining. We only need one piece of stabilizer for today's project and we'll be using the OESD Lightweight Tearaway. Lightweight Tearaway is the lightest and most economical of all of the OESD stabilizers. It's perfect for things like red work that don't have very many stitches. Generally, one piece will support up to about 12,000 stitches, but you do want to keep in mind that it's not made for very dense designs. So even if your design has 12,000 stitches, you need to keep in mind how much space that design takes up. This stabilizer tears away very cleanly, which is one of the reasons we'll be using it for today's project. When we turn our project, we'll want to tear away the excess stabilizer, so we want to be sure it's easy to remove. It's also a great stabilizer if you like to do paper piecing or for using decorative stitching on your sewing machine. For our project today, we'll be using it as a carrier stabilizer. Basically, that means we're hooping it and we're using it to just carry our project as it's being stitched together. We'll only need one color of thread for our project today and we will wind both our bobbin and thread our needle with the same color of isocord thread. If you've done other Stitch Party projects, you know how much we like the isocord polyester thread. It is that 40 weight tri lobal polyester, which means it's very shiny and very pretty for your embroidery stitches. It's available in a lot of colors, 423 colors. And this variety of colors makes it great for a project like this because it's easy to really get a good match to your fabric. It is color fast and bleach safe and there are no dye lots so you can use one spool and if you use it completely up you can replace it with a new spool of the same color and it will be exactly the same. What's really important about the isocord thread for this project is that it is sturdy enough for construction projects. Some embroidery threads on the market are very pretty but not as strong. So you'll find that when you're putting together a project like this where the actual construction of the project is being done with your thread, you want to have a thread that's both pretty but also practical, that's strong enough it won't fall apart as you turn this project right side out. Now a couple of other, of other supplies you'll need for this project. One is temporary tape, just a light clear tape with a temporary adhesive. You'll also need a set of plastic snaps. We'll be using size 20, which is the standard size plastic snap. You'll also need at least a seven inch zipper. I really like the Atkinson zippers. They come in a lot of colors and you can find them in a loose, single zipper uh, so you can get the color that you want for your project. Typically you'll find these zippers in a 14 inch length. 
That's fine for this project because it's very easy to cut the zipper to the length that we need, but you do need at least a seven inch zipper. Make sure if you're using a zipper other than the Atkinson zipper that is a nylon coil zipper. A metal zipper will not work with this project. The other supplies that we will need are an embroidery needle. We'll use the Groats Beckert embroidery needle size 75 and a jeans needle size 90. We'll wind our bobbin with the matching isocord thread and we do need a pair of scissors for trimming the threads. We'll need a pair of snap pliers and a point turner. The embroidery needles are the ones that we'll use for actually constructing the project. Embroidery needles have a slightly larger eye to accommodate the heavier thread and they're great for embroidery because they're going to have the strength to handle the high density stitching. We're also using a jeans needle today, a size 90. And the reason we're using the jeans needle is when we go to do this top stitching on this project. The project is done in the hoop, but when we finish it off, we'll want to do some top stitching to give it a more finished look and also to close the opening for the project. When we do that, we'll be stitching through several layers of fabric, so it's important to use a larger needle. The jeans needle also have a really nice sharp point, so they can do a really good job of penetrating those heavy areas around the corners when we go to top stitch this. We'll also want to use a pair of snap pliers. These snap pliers are for plastic snaps and they're really, really easy to use. If you've mostly worked with metal snaps in the past instead of plastic snaps, you're going to find that you actually are going to fall in love with plastic snaps. They're very easy to install and really easy to use. They're very sturdy, long lasting, and I like the look of them a lot. The plastic snap pliers though do need to be specific for plastic snaps. The standard size is size 20, which is how the snap pliers come installed with a size 20. But there are alternate pieces if you're using other snap sizes. And the tool does come with an awl to pierce a hole for when you actually place those snaps. One of the most important tools for this project is a point turner. This is one of those tools that most of us have in our sewing room, but we cannot undervalue its how valuable this tool is. Especially for this project, using that point turner to really get the creases in your seams and to turn out those corners as neatly as possible will really give you the prettiest finish to your project. Now finally, our last supplies are our embroidery machine. We'll need our embroidery machine with our embroidery hoop. It needs to be large enough for a five by seven inch design. Of course, we'll need our embroidery module. And if you're doing this class, Outside of home, don't forget your power cord, your embroidery foot, your needle, and a USB stick to load your design. Our very first step is to prepare the tab. We'll do that by taking that 3 inch by 3 inch piece of fabric and pressing it in half. Then we'll take the raw edges and fold them in toward the center as you see here and press again. Then finally you'll fold that on itself one more time and press so you'll end up with a three quarter inch width piece. You'll then take this to your sewing machine and you're going to edge stitch along the open folded edge all the way down and then repeat it on the other side. So we'll stitch down this side of the tab and the opposite side of the tab. That will make it look symmetrical. Then we're going to press this in half so fold the two remaining raw edges together and press it and just set it aside. Now we're ready to switch to our embroidery mode. We're going to hoop a single layer of the OESD lightweight tearaway stabilizer. We'll want to prep our fabrics. Notice that in our instructions we had several pieces that needed to be folded and pressed after they were cut. So the two main pieces of the wallet start out as 5 by 13 and 5 by 4 which you're then going to fold in half and press with a really nice crease to five by six and a half and five by two. Set those fabrics aside, place your hoop on the machine and stitch the first 
color change. This is going to be your zipper placement. Here you can see these two lines. Now you're going to take your zipper and you're going to place it between the zipper placement stitch and just center it. It doesn't matter exactly where the two ends of the zipper are as long as the zipper stops are well past the edge of the placement lines. You'll want to tape this in place. Also make sure that your zipper stop is to, or your zipper pull rather, is to the left side. So your zipper pull needs to be on the left side. And just tape it in place. Now you're going to place this on the machine and stitch the next color change which is called the zipper tack down. So here you can see it just sews on either side of the zipper and sews it in place. Now your next step is to go ahead and remove that extra tape. And notice I didn't worry about getting every little bit of the tape away. We can always come back and take that out later. We want the biggest chunk out because these outside areas are going to get sewn together. So anything that's beyond this line will end up staying in our project. So we want to remove the tape at this point. Now we're going to place our main wallet fabrics onto the project. We'll place our five by two, remember that's the folded measurement piece at the top. The folded edge should go along the zipper teeth. So notice how closely we've lined that folded edge up with the zipper teeth, but we do want the zipper teeth to be exposed. So right along that edge. Then the same for the bottom piece. The folded edge of the five by six and a half inch piece is placed right up next to those zipper teeth. Now we'll put some tape in place. I like to put a piece of tape over this center where the folded edge is right across the zipper teeth. And then I'll put some more pieces of tape along the edges to hold the project in place. Now we'll return this to the machine and stitch the next color change, which is our panel placement. So we will stitch a line, a box around the top that holds the top of the wallet in place, and there'll be a box around the bottom that holds the bottom of the wallet. Again, we'll want to tear out that excess tape because we won't need it anymore. Now we're going to stitch the next color change, which is the pocket lining placement and it's going to stitch around this top portion of the wallet and across the center here. So it's going to show us where to place our pocket lining. At this point we'll actually take the hoop off of the machine and flip it over to the back. Here we're looking at the back side. We're going to keep the project in the hoop but we're just looking at the back side of the hoop and we can now see this line that we just stitched which was our zipper lining placement. So we're going to take our lining fabric that was that five by four and a half inch piece and we're actually going to place it so that the right side is against the stabilizer and the wrong side is facing us when we look at the back of the hoop. This is so the right side of our pocket lining will show when we open the zipper. So again the right side is against the stabilizer and the wrong side is facing you. And then tape that pocket lining in place. Now you'll return the hoop to the machine and you're going to stitch the pocket lining tack down. This will actually be in the exact same position as the previous color change. So it will seem like you're sewing the same thing you just did, which you are. The first one was the placement, and now this is actually tacking that fabric in place. This will have an opening where the zipper is. So at this point, you can now open the zipper halfway. It's very important that as soon as you stitch that pocket tack down, you do unzip the zipper halfway. And the reason it's so important that we unzip the zipper at this step is our next color change is going to sew our pocket placement, which will be the placement for the card pockets. Here we can see it stitched. It sticks out into the seam allowance here. There will be four tabs on each side but it does stitch across the zipper at that point. So it'll help tack that zipper together, but it will 
close it off. So we have to be sure the zipper tab is pulled, the zipper pull is pulled into the project before we stitch that next color change. So the next color change again is the pocket placement and it's just stitched without having to add any additional fabric at this point and it's showing us where we're going to place our pockets in the next step. Now in the next step we're actually going to baste the pockets together and it will baste the tab into place. So at the bottom of our project the first thing we'll do is to add the tab. We need to measure where the center of our project is. You can also eyeball this but I like to be precise so we'll take our quilt ruler and measure the exact center of our project and then we'll place our tab at the exact center at the bottom of the hooping. So here I've moved the ruler out of the way so we can see a little better. The tab fold is going to be toward the project to the inside of the project and the raw edges of the tab are to the outside of the project. You only want about a quarter to even an eighth inch extending beyond that seam line. So the bulk of the tab is toward the inside and only a small amount, about a quarter to an eighth of an inch is beyond the seam. In my picture I actually have almost a half inch extending beyond the seam and that was a little bit too much into the seam allowance. We needed more length in the center. So just scooch that up a little bit so that you have just a very scant quarter inch or eighth inch extending beyond that seam allowance. Again the tab parts toward the center, the folded edge toward the center, and the raw edges toward the outside. Now tape this in place really securely. Next we're going to place our two folded pockets that are the smaller pockets. These are the ones that were five by five. We folded to five by two and a half. The folded edge goes at the placement line. So the outermost placement lines here and here and here and here is where that folded edge will be aligned. The raw edge of that folded piece of fabric should pretty much be in line with our outer pieces of fabric. The most important thing though is to line up the folded edge with the placement line. Now tape this in place and then you'll place your second set of pockets here to the inner placement line. So the folded edge, the larger pocket folded edge goes toward the inner placement line both at the top and the bottom of the project. When we tape this in place we want to be sure we tape it at the seam line. So we want a piece of tape each place that that folded edge meets the seam. We don't have to worry about the folded edge of the smaller piece because it will be covered by this larger pocket. But when we go to stitch around and hold all of this together we want to be sure that the embroidery foot doesn't get caught under this folded edge right here. So we be sure that we tape down along the seam allowance here this folded edge. The most important pieces are this left bottom one and top right one, but if you just want to be on the safe side just tape all four edges at the seam allowance. Now our next color change will be the pocket tack down. So this is going to hold down all of our pockets and it'll stitch the tab in place. This will just make it extra secure before we add our seam. Also helps to secure this pocket edge when we go to actually turn the project right side out. So this is the pocket tack down. Now we're going to take that wallet lining fabric, that's the 8 by 5 inch piece, and center it right sides together with our project. Tape this in place pretty securely as flat as you can. You'll find that where the zipper pull is it's a little bit hard to get this per fabric perfectly flat, but get it as smooth as you can and tape it down securely. Now you'll stitch the very last color change which is the seam stitch. You're going to notice that the seam stitch is not just a triple stitch or a single stitch, but it's actually a special stitch designed to really hold our wallet together securely. Now once you've stitched that final color change you can take your project out of the hoop and I like to use a rotary cutter and ruler to trim it to about an eighth inch all the way around from the seam allowance. 
You could also just use a pair of dressmaker shears or a small pair of scissors to cut the project out about an eighth of an inch away from the seam allowance. Be sure that you clip the corners so that the project will turn neatly. On the back side of your project, you will be able to remove some of the stabilizer. Part of the stabilizer will be trapped behind our pocket lining fabric, but we can tear out part of the stabilizer on the back side. So remove any stabilizer that you can. The less stabilizer is in the project, the easier it will be to turn it right side out. Now you're going to turn the whole project through the opening. This may take some time because you do have a lot of layers that you're working with, but take your time and you will be able to turn it. When you use your point turner, be very patient as you turn out the corners. Take your time really making those corners as crisp as you can and creasing your seam with your point turner uh, and creasing tool. You really want to get it as secure as possible. One thing that I like to do is to turn it as much as I possibly can and then I go ahead and press the whole project. And then before I sew anything closed, I do a little bit more work with my point turner to get my corners out a little bit more because I've been able to now relax the fabric a little bit and then press it again really well. A good pressing job will make a big difference into the quality of how this project looks when it's finished. Now, once you have the project completely pressed, you're going to edge stitch all the way around it. Now, if you didn't want to do the edge stitching, you could skip this step. And in that case, you would simply seal this opening closed, either with a hand stitch, or you could actually slip a small piece of the OESD Fuse and Seal, which is a permanent no-sew iron-on, in between that opening and seal it closed. However, I really like the look of the edge stitching all the way around the project. I think it helps to give the wallet a more finished and professional look. Remember that when you do the edge stitching, you'll want to use a size 90 jeans needle that's going to penetrate those layers a little bit nicer. And I like to use an edge stitch foot and move my needle over a couple clicks to give me a really nice smooth finish all the way around. As you're edge stitching, these four corners are going to be curves. You won't ever be able to get a perfect rectangle out of this wallet. And the curved edge is actually what you'd expect in a wallet. If you look at a ready-to-wear wallet, it's going to have a curved edge as well. So as you're going around those curves, just go nice and slow, remembering you've got a lot of thickness that you're working with here. And also, going a little bit slower will help you get a smoother curve to your stitching. So just stitch all the way around. If you feel really confident in your edge stitching ability, then use a thread that has a high contrast so it really shows up and looks nice. If you're a little bit more hesitant about how, um, how well and how neatly you can do your edge stitching, use a thread that blends really well with your fabric, and that way it won't show very much if you're off a little bit. The more you do this, the easier it'll get for you. Again, we're going to go all the way around, um, making sure that the zipper pull is to the inside when we do the edge stitching. And when we stitch, we'll edge stitch all the way around and basically ignore the tab. So just stitch across the area where the tab is rather than trying to stitch up into the tab. It's already got its own edge stitched look that we created at the beginning of the project. Now the last step is to add the snaps. We're going to open up the zipper and there'll be a little bit of tear away we need to tear open behind the zipper so we can get to the pocket. So tear out that little piece of tear away and then you're going to place your snap. Now your snap's going to go right in the center so you can measure it or you can also put your snap on the tab side first and then use that tab to help you determine the placement for the other side. It really doesn't matter which side of the snap goes on the zipper side and which side goes on the tab, but do make sure that when you install the snaps, you install them so that the snap portions that actually snap together are facing each other. And that means the smooth side of the snap will be on the inside of the zipper here. Now one last step is to go ahead and snap your wallet together and then give it a good press so that you get a nice finished crease at the center of that wallet. And now your project's ready to use. Here's our finished wallet. 
here we can open it up and this zipper pouch actually only extends to this bottom half so you're not going to lose your coins all the way down your project it only goes to here when you open it up you'll find that you have four little pockets that you can place your cards in and here we've slid the cards all the way down so they're just the right size that you can see which card you're accessing so you can slide four cards or a couple cards in each pocket into this little pouch we think you're going to really love making this in the hoop wallet and you might want to make some other variations there is a collection called in the hoop wallets it's collection number one two six three one that has some fun variations on this wallet project the main process is the same but we've got some additional embellishments for these designs there are 10 wallet designs in the collection and five of them instead of having the short zipper pouch for coins have a longer pouch that's made for bills so here are two of the wallets the shorter zipper version and the longer zipper version both of them with these cute button designs on them there is a damask wallet set a paisley wallet set the plain wallet which is the one we created today and a long version of that and a quilted wallet set so this one I really like because it ends up looking a lot like what you'd see in a ready-made wallet playing around with your fabrics and your embroidery colors really will make these wallets special thank you for joining us for the stitch party today we know you'll enjoy making this project and we hope you'll come back for more stitch party fun